La Nina has developed, and this is going to have dramatic consequences on the rainfall picture for Queensland, the Northern Territory, and Western Australia as we head into our big months of the wet season coming up at the end of 2025 and into 2026. A lot of rainfall is expected, a lot of tropical cyclone activity is expected, and this new development with this La Nina developing changes our spring and summer weather outlook. My name is Josh from Cyclones Oz. I'm going to be giving you a detailed overview on what you can expect in the coming couple of months. So if you are brand new to my channel, please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. Let's get stuck straight into things. This is a look at the sea surface temperature anomalies from the Bureau of Meteorology in our Central Pacific Ocean region. You can see here this blue pool in the Central Pacific Ocean here along the equator. This is cooler than average sea temperatures. This is where water temperatures have dropped below the long-term average. And this is because of the trade flow that's blowing across the Pacific Ocean has intensified. And this is what we see developing into La Nina periods. And this is the latest information that we've ca uh, came across in the last week or so that really highlights this cool pool that's developing in the Central Pacific. And of course, these trade flow winds heading from east to west is building up very warm water in parts of the Western Pacific Ocean and of course, into the Coral Sea adjacent to the Queensland coastline as well. Very warm sea temperatures are developing through here. Combining that with the negative Indian Ocean Dipole as well, which is pushing warmer than average sea temperatures towards the West Australian coastline, this paints a very warm wet picture now for Australia. Lots of rainfall with these warm sea temperatures on both sides of the nation. That's going to drive up our tropical cyclone numbers. That is going to drive up our rainfall event numbers. And it really is now shaping up to be quite a wet picture across much of Australia's west and east and just in the north in general over the coming couple of months. Let's break that down for you right now. Here's a look at our CFS modelling. This shows how much rainfall is expected compared to the long-term average over the next couple of months. And you can see those green areas indicating above average rainfall and those yellow shapes indicating below low average rainfall. These models are very, very accurate because they're a combination of thousands of different forecasts averaged out over a very long period of time and they can give us some incredible results. They in fact predicted the development of a tropical cyclone in the Coral Sea through Mar or through early March of 2025 and that's what gave us tropical cyclone alpha going in towards southeast Queensland for an example. You can see December we're expecting things to head back towards baseline, particularly across Queensland with conditions marginally drier than expected and that's because we've just had or we're just going through our MJO pulse right now, which is where uh, rainfall increases across northern Australia. That's expected to subside as we get uh, towards early December and then return as we get towards late December and early January. And you can see that, at, that as we head in towards the January picture, rainfall returning in a pretty dramatic fashion as that madden julian oscillation pulse returns to sections four and five. What that scientific ogly goog means for you is that rainfall is going to return towards Queensland from January onwards and it's going to persist through February, which is also going to get, leave these sea temperatures here in the Coral Sea a lot of time to warm up dramatically because there's going to be less cloud cover in the month of December. These sea temperatures are going to get out of hand pretty quickly. And then once that rainfall driver returns with that Madden Julian oscillation coming in in early uh, January, we're going to see rainfall really begin to pick up through the Coral Sea. And that will likely result in one or two tropical lows going in towards the Queensland area and maybe a tropical cyclone or two as well heading out into the Coral Sea. Uh, we, it's impossible to accurately pinpoint exactly where these tropical cyclones are going to develop. Uh, this far out. However, we can get a good idea by having a look at some of these maps and seeing where those above average rainfall anomalies are forecast to be. And in this case here, at least in January, which is the picture that I'm showing you right now, we're expecting these uh, tropical cyclone locations to be somewhere out into the Coral Sea or through the Gulf of Carpentaria, where above average rainfall is expected. This picture remains very wet in towards February as well. Big rainfall is possible into parts of the Coral Sea as that Manjulian Oscillation pulse sticks around. Big rainfall also expected offshore from the Northern Territory. And as we've been saying for the last month or two big rainfall also expected in towards the West Australian waters as well. Like I said, with that negative Indian Ocean dipole, that favours above average rainfall offshore from Western Australia. That will also favour tropical cyclone development offshore from Western Australia, not necessarily landfalling systems into Western Australia per se, but we will be talking about those tropical cyclone numbers being spiked as we get out towards January and especially February as this uh, Madden Julian Oscillation returns. Now you've been hearing me say Madden Julian Oscillation, Madden Julian Oscillation. You may not know what that means. Well, it's a pretty simple simple concept to understand. It's basically the location of this uh, energy or this surging moisture that rotates around the planet anti-clockwise on about a 30 to 40 day basis. That is a very oversimplified definition of the madden julian oscillation, but it does, it moves around the equator in this kind of fashion here, so anti-clockwise, uh, and it, uh, it, we've got sections three, four, and five, which indicate Australia, so three, uh, three and four is for WA, uh, into section four and five is the NT, and then section five is over 
in towards Queensland. So you can see the Man Julian Oscillation is pulsing right now. Its current location is right about uh, here and it is beginning to move now in towards the Indian Ocean and that's going to result in the next couple of weeks being quite wet across Queensland. I'm going to get into a detailed overview of that in just a second. But by the end of November, uh, out around here, which is at the 25th of November, it's beginning to leave the Australian air and return back in towards the Western Pacific and then it's going to go on towards Africa and into the Atlantic Basin and that will cool things off in the Australian region for the month of December before. If we extrapolate this forecast here, it returns into sections three and four and then eventually in towards five by late December around Christmas time and into early January. And that's when rainfall accumulations are expected to spike as we get out towards Christmas and into January. Typically speaking, the first big rainfall onset for northern Queensland and parts of the Northern Territory comes around late December and into early January. Whilst the northern rainfall onset can start many months before that, the first real uptick in rainfall where we start talking about weeks where 500 to 1,000 millimetres is possible, particularly across northern Queensland, that comes in late December and into early January. So it's going to be right on time again for that very significant uptick in rainfall that we generally see at that time of year. And just to check back in on the southern uh, hemisphere uh, monitoring here from the Bureau of Meteorology, this is a look at our Nino 3.4 index here. And the current picture is now in La Nina. We've seen these sea temperatures averaged out over the Nino 3.4 index, which is that area in the Pacific Ocean that we showed at the start of the video update, where those blues were, it has now dropped to about minus 1.1 degrees Celsius below the long-term average. And that relative Nino 3.4 index indicates that we are now in a La Nina where it's below 0.8. And at this time, as mentioned, it is at negative 1.1 degrees Celsius. That's actually expected to fall a little bit further. It might get down to about 1.25 or minus 1.3 below zero uh, here. And that will uh, strengthen the La Nina as we get out towards December before conditions are expected to return up towards baseline by February or March of 2026. And then we might even be on track for an El Nino developing in towards spring 2026 as well. So we're going to get this rebound here as it gets down towards La Nina. It'll then quickly rebound as we get out towards early 2026. And by January, we should be exiting La Nina conditions. Now, La Nina generally, or the conditions that La Nina creates, generally follow the La Nina observations by a period of about two to three months. So whilst we're in the La Nina right now, the big rainfall that the La Nina typically brings won't begin to arrive until late December or early January. As mentioned, with that Madden Julian oscillation pulse, that's meant to come in towards late December. And likewise, when we exit La Nina conditions, which is going to be sometime in January 2026, the rainfall is not going to ease off until probably about March or April 2026, which means we may have a dry end to the wet season, but it's not likely to be a dramatic difference compared to the long-term average. And you can see as well with that Indian Ocean Dipole, which is the Indian Ocean version of uh, El Nino La Nina, you can see very, very strongly negative, which also favours significant rainfall accumulations for Western Australia, but also through Southeastern Australia in those Northwest cloud bands that come in off the Pilbara coastline and then travel through Central Australia and then in towards Victoria and at New South Wales around this time of the year as well. So the uh, Indian Ocean Dipole is generally a big player until we start to see the uh, monsoon really begin to build and then it becomes a bit uh, of a lesser player in the weather scene. But for now, we are still expecting that above average rainfall for the next couple of weeks or so. I'll get to that in just a minute. It's also expected to return to baseline with conditions set to follow by about a month or two behind the Indian Ocean Dipole as we get out towards January 2026 as well. But we're not expecting a positive Indian Ocean Dipole, which would favor dry conditions out west, nor are we expecting a negative Indian Ocean Dipole. Generally, as we get out towards our autumn months, the Indian Ocean Dipole hangs around that uh, kind of neutral side of things. It very rarely is in the positive or the negative side of things as we get out towards our autumn months. Anyways, that forecast that I've been hyping up, you can see the next 14 days is expected to be wet. This is a look at windy.com and the rainfall accumulations from the ECMW uh, forecast model. It is a very tropical pitch now beginning to be painted. We're beginning to see the first of that Manjulian Oscillation Pulse, which is expected to arrive sometime around the 17th to the 20th of November. And that's going to start over in the West Australian waters. We're going to see this rainfall begin to build out here. And we may even see a tropical low develop in the West Australian waters and then head in towards the Kimberley region of Western Australia, drop 100 or 200 millimetres there. We'll see enhanced thunderstorm activity through the top end of the NT and enhanced shower activity coming in off the Solomon Sea that's going to move into the Cape York Peninsula, which will also in turn enhance rainfall through parts of the Daintree Rainforest and the Cassiope Coast as well although it looks like the North Queensland coastline above Mackay and Rockhampton is going to be relatively unaffected by this rainfall here. You can also see with that negative uh, Indian Ocean Dipole, which like I said, favours rainfall in northwest cloud bands moving through Western Australia. Normally Central Australia, very, very dry, but a few places may be looking at a month's worth of rainfall coming through in the next week or so as big cloud bands begin to build through there. And then that's going to carry rainfall and moisture over and towards Southeastern Australia as well. And that includes parts of Queensland and New South Wales, especially. In fact, there's some big rainfall 
coastal numbers now on the forecast for parts of New South Wales, Victoria, and also southeastern Queensland. In fact, we may be talking about a rainfall event developing and whether that comes from a low pressure system tracking across the Australian uh, Red Centre or a low pressure system sliding down the New South Wales coastline in the East Australian current. The details are still pretty murky on that, but either way, it looks like it's going to spark at least a few days worth of rainfall, which could amount to 100 to 300 millimetres falling through parts of the New South Wales coastline. That may carry over in towards southeast Queensland as well into the Brisbane area, but it's very likely at this stage to develop somewhere between Sydney up towards Brisbane, excluding both locations. So Coffs Harbour, parts of the mid north coast and the northeast coast could be in the firing line for this heavy rainfall. It's doubtful it's going to head anywhere further north of Queensland. For that, we would need a strong low pressure system to, to develop somewhere in the central northern territory and track through Queensland, which just wouldn't happen at this time of the year. But as you can see, it is an increasingly wet picture that's beginning to build. And as this La Nina has now properly developed, you can see very dry conditions through parts of the Pacific Ocean. And you can kind of think of the rainfall uh, that's meant to be developing in this part of the Pacific Ocean. Keep in mind, they're still well and truly in their monsoon season, albeit they're just coming out of it, is all being shunted over towards the uh, west a little bit further, uh, which takes it over Indonesia, but it also takes it over Australia and parts of the South Pacific Ocean as well. And this is going to translate to a lot of rainfall beginning to build across eastern Australia. It's not quite on this forecast modelling yet, but as we get out towards December and January, a substantially above average rainfall accumulations are expected. And again, a key word to take away from this is compared to average, or a key term to take away from this is, of course, compared to average. Of course, December, January, February, even in El Nino years, brings massive rainfall to Queensland, the Northern Territory, and Western Australia, and also sometimes to New South Wales and Victoria. El Nino years can bring massive floods, but La Nina years are almost always bring massive flooding conditions. This is a pretty similar La Nina, all things considered in terms of intensity to what we've seen back in 2023 to, uh, into 2024. We saw a lot of rainfall developing at the back end of 2024 into 2025 as well through parts of Queensland. Those lower sea temperatures here translating to above average sea temperatures here into parts of the Pacific Ocean and especially towards the Coral Sea really did a good job at spiking rainfall through parts of coastal Queensland and gave them one of the wettest years on record or one of the wettest wet seasons on record through 2024 and into 2025 this year. Not looking like it's going to be any different. Now, of course, we still have the impacts, the long-lasting impacts of that sudden stratospheric warming event to get, uh, contend with, which could keep rainfall a bit more on the minimal side of things through parts of Queensland, but especially through New South Wales and Victoria, at least for the next month or so. But over the next uh, month, out towards the next six weeks, we're going to see this rainfall begin to return to back where it should be, uh, and on the forecast, where it should be is above average. So we're going to continue to see this wet picture increase across Queensland, the Northern Territory, and Western Australia. That's going to do it for today's weather forecast update. It is a bit of a broader one. Uh, but I do hope it's answered a lot more questions in regards to when this rainfall is going to arrive because, of course, we are now properly into the wet season. Tropical cyclone activity is not piping up anytime soon, but as we do enter the bigger months of tropical cyclone season and the wet season in general, December, uh, January, February, and March, rainfall is going to begin to pick up, and that's going to happen uh, in, to a more extreme degree as this La Nina has just been picked up. If you have enjoyed this update or found it informative or helpful in any way, please do consider leaving a like and leave me some feedback in the comment section down below as well. Click the join button if you haven't already as well and uh, consider sending through a super thanks as well. For further updates, check out the Facebook page too. That's going to be all for me today. So a shout out to the channel sponsors. I could not run the show without them and as always, their support is massively appreciated. I'll catch you all in the next storm.